This is the second video in our series on building a garage with a floor and a set of stairs, some type of a storage area above the garage. And in this episode here, I'm going to modify the roof and wall framing so that we can get some headroom for the stairway. And this is also going to be my first example. I have a couple of more ideas for the roof. So let's go ahead and get started by taking this thing apart. And I'm not going to spend that much time taking it apart like I normally do in some of my other videos. Just kind of give you an idea. And again, you can pause the video and stop it if you need to take a look at something at any time during the video. So there we go. We have our wall framing. We are going to start here where instead of having the studs extend past the floor, we're going to have the floor sit on top of this section of the building. And the wall height here will be eight foot one or a standard 92 and a quarter inch stud. And the floor framing on the other side will be the same. We're still going to have our doubler here, except that the doubler will be sitting on top of the wall along with another doubler over here to support the wall framing that's going to be supporting the roof framing along with some blocks because in this area here we're probably not going to be able to use the tongue and groove for the floor sheathing and if I would have left the floor sheathing alone I would have ended up with about a four inch strip over here and that's because most structural engineers require a two foot minimum distance for the length of a piece of floor sheathing, and that's usually going to be in any direction. And don't forget to install the double studs underneath any point where you're going to have a doubler that will require some additional structural support, and that will go for over here also. And even though I didn't put one over here, this is probably going to need one too. And of course, a view of the blocks there. Let's go ahead and install our floor sheathing. And if you go back to the first video, you can see where the floor sheathing would have stopped right here. So we would have had a four foot sheet from here to here, leaving us with about a three and a half inch strip going all the way across. And hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and install our wall framing. And you could always have these studs go all the way up and underneath the wall, but I wanted to provide you with another example of something that you could do. And I will go into more details on this in some future videos. And in order to determine the height of the wall framing in this video, I worked my way backwards from the top of the ridge down because I wanted to have the two ridges intersect. And that'll make sense here when I get to the roof framing. And I'm also going to need a double roof rafter to support the valley rafter. And then another board here to nail to the wall framing that will provide additional structural support for the roof sheathing. And the width of this area is usually going to be determined by your building codes. And in our example here, I made it a little bit larger than six feet because most building codes require a 36 inch by 36 inch minimum for a landing area. Even though this direction here is about four foot, this direction here is about six foot four inches. Next up, let's go ahead and install our roof framing, our rafters, our fill rafters or jack rafters, and our valley. We have a valley on each side. And for those of you wondering why these rafters are over here, why it's shorter here, that's because I use the same fill rafters on each side or the same measurements where in reality you could have moved these over and got rid of these two. It's just that they wouldn't have lined up there and that's just something I think I do out of habit. And don't forget our rafter ties here and you might need to install ceiling joists if you're going to drywall. And our fascia will stop here and you can see here where this board here is going to nail to the wall and then support the roof sheathing. Our gable end here, let's go ahead and install our gable studs and our shaped blocks. And you could probably use smaller rafters. We're using 2x10 here. And a view of how the valley is going to die into the wall here. It's going to be sitting on top of the wall. And this little slot right here is going to be for our fascia board. Our fascia board is going to sit on top of the wall framing. And this piece of fascia board is going to notch over the roof. However, if you were to extend this section of the roof, 
roof framing out a little further or lower the roof then you can actually create a straight line here so you can see where if the roof extended over to about here then this board here wouldn't notch over the roof framing and sometimes that looks a little goofy and then we are going to install one lookout another view of the valley here and of course a view of the ridge how it dies into the other ridge to where it's going to be even or flush with the other ridge and like i said you could get rid of this raptor by moving these two over starting 16 inches on center from here and going this way and then the load transfer is going to come down through the valley raptor to the double raptor that's why we need a doubler here and I say that's why we need a doubler there but don't forget this is not meant to be structural engineering information and roofs like this might not be able to be built in areas where you have snow loads in a view of how these rafters will need to be shaped to sit on top of the other roof and a view from the bottom and you can see here where this would be difficult to drywall and if you were going to drywall the ceiling then you might need to make the valley rafter a little smaller so keep that in mind when you are designing your project a bottom view of the rafter ties here and another view of how the valley intersects into the doubler there along with how I extended the framing plates to just provide a little support for the roof rafter here even though most of the support for this rafter is going to be transferred to this section of the roof and even though I didn't do it in this example don't forget that you could always extend the wall framing all the way over to where the valley rafter will sit on top of the wall framing and then you might not need the doubler here however I didn't do that in this design because I didn't want to extend the wall into the storage area even further. Next up, let's go ahead and head back to the top here so that we can see how the roof sheathing and the sleeper board or the backing board is going to work out. And even though these two rafters will be sitting on top of this backing board, it's always going to be a good idea to leave enough room so that you can slide shingles or roofing materials underneath this section. And for those of you who are going to be hiring a roofer, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have them come out and take a look at this area to make sure that it is going to be built correctly. So there you can see where we have a gap here. And we will have the same thing on the other side. And I don't know if I have another video on that. If you need something on that, let me know. And it will always be a good idea to leave this piece off so that the roofer can finish this section here without this being in the way. And again, that might be something that your roofer will need to go over with you. And even though I left a larger gap here, you might not need to do that. As long as this piece here is removable, so see how the fascia board is cut a little shorter for the gap there in a view of this from underneath and again like i said i would imagine most architects aren't going to like that notch there however they might like the wall here that is set back instead of extending forward to support the valley rafter and making the room look smaller so there it is from the front of the garage and I will wrap the video up here by taking a look at the other side of the garage. And for those of you who I might have lost somewhere during the way, feel free to leave any questions in the comment area. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed watching the video or even better, learn something from it.